Hello and welcome to Sky Career Talks, where we display why it's great to learn with us and communicate. I'm your host, David Chains, and today I'm super excited to be speaking with Keith Dempsey. Keith is a Senior Manager of Cybersecurity Operations at Roe, a direct-to-patient healthcare company providing high-quality, affordable healthcare without the need for insurance. Prior to joining Roe, he was the head of intrusion monitoring and incident response at Datto, a cloud-based software and security solutions provider. And Keith also spent a number of years as an analyst at Bridgewater Associates, the world's largest hedge fund. He is a certified information system security professional and carries six industry certifications covering defensive security disciplines of forensics, intrusion analysis, and incident handling. Dempsey received his bachelor's degree in information technology and informatics from Rutgers University in 2011. We hope you'll enjoy this insightful chat today. We now present to you my interview with Keith Dempsey. So thank you for taking the time to be here and speak with me today, Keith. Um, so before we begin, I want to ask, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So to kick us off, can you give us a brief overview of your career journey? Yeah, so uh, I graduated from Rutgers in the class of 2011. Uh, I was an ITI alum. Uh, and so I actually looked at the curriculum and a lot of the, the classes are, are ones that I went through as well. And so coming out of college, you know, um, you know, one of the 400 level courses was information security. And it was in that class that I was like, I'm, I'm all about it. Like, this seems like a great career path. And so from there, you know, I didn't land a, um, a job out of college into the security field, uh, or really even the tech field. I landed in an account management job, which leveraged some technical knowledge, but in many ways it was it was a stepping stone job. Uh, and I did that for two years, which like gave me two years to work on kind of off the shelf, literally out of Barnes and Noble security books and online content. And that enabled me to land through a recruiter. Uh, my first job in a security operations center as an analyst, an entry level analyst. Um, but, you know, just being hungry and, and learning from books and like showing that desire to be in the game. Um, that's how I got that entry level job was someone just took a chance on me. And so um, I worked in a security operations center as an analyst doing uh, investigations and incident response and forensics for probably four and a half years. Uh, and after that, I got my first security engineer job. Um, that was to build out the security control stack at a company, um, start to lead a security program. Uh, and then a team got built out around me that I got to hire up. Um, so that was a great opportunity as well. Um, and I spent, uh, again, about four and a half years uh, doing that. Uh, and so now I'm at a company where, um, you know, I'm, I'm a senior manager building out another security operations center. Uh, and it's it's really all the same game. It's it's cyber defense, incident response, forensics, and um, doing intrusion analysis on a day to day basis. So uh, that's really been the last ten years of, of getting out of college and and working my way up to leading a security program. Well, that's great. I, I like hearing that. You know, um, even though it was straight out of college, you still you know worked to leverage those skills and really honed in on those skills. And you know, whether it was through books or you know just finding any amount of resources to educate yourself to you know learn more about your field and um, utilizing you know different industries to really hone in on those skills and sort of build your craft. So, what does a normal day look like for you? Right, because no two days are the same. Yeah, I, I would definitely say it's changed a lot over the years as well. You know, going through analysis to engineer to uh, manager and now senior manager, you know, like the the job description constantly changes. But the thing that has been consistent through the whole you know process has been um, I've always been working in cyber defense in security operations centers and pursuing that um, that discipline, because there are many routes in cybersecurity. It's like way bigger than just like the cyber warrior aspect of things. Um, at least in, in my, um, you know, my piece of the puzzle, uh, a day-to-day -day is really in alignment with like the overall strategy, which is we're trying to get more visibility, ask good questions of that visibility, and then having a team and, and, uh, the expertise necessary to get good answers out of those questions that you're asking. And so what that really means on a day-to-day -day basis is, 
you know, we have plenty of different security controls or non-security controls that are integrated and we're trying to make those better. We're trying to get them and push them farther into the environment so we get more and more granular visibility. So there is like a project management and engineering arm uh, of a day-to-day -day always. Um, then there's the like asking good questions of that data. So we think about what the adversaries in the world are doing. We think about what the best practice is. We think about what our company's individual risk profile is and what they're worried about. And all those things come together to say like, great, we have this visibility. What do we want to know? And what concerns us? And so there's a huge component of you know developing detectors and investigations, et cetera, that lives in that arm. So there is a good amount of still getting your hands dirty and, and working through the data. Um, and then finally, you know, thinking through it strategically of like, okay, now that we're kind of asking good questions and we need to hire up a team and we need to align that team with skills and deliverables, et cetera, like there is a management component of it that uh, you know never goes away either. So uh, it is uh, certainly a, an always changing beast, but uh, I would say my day to day is, you know, partially getting my hands surgery, partially high level thought and strategic thinking and partially general project management and engineering. Well, you mentioned uh, project management, data and engineering. So I'm curious, you know, what type of skills are needed or students could be leveraging now, both um, in the technical realm, but also in a personal realm, because you mentioned, um, you know, being able to strategically think, but also uh, a management component as well. Yeah, you know, I, I think working in a world where you have analysts who are like driven to achieve the goals of analysis, then you have engineers who have to solve problems and work through kind of these these technical complexities that exist in this world. Uh, and then, you know, management overseeing both of those things. Uh, there is one thing that I think kind of cuts through all of that at a, an interpersonal or at least a higher level thought level, um, which is being able to discern um, tasks from goals and navigating those levels in a graceful way. So I think that's like certainly something to think about whether like when you're given something is like, why does this make sense? How do I know? Um, has the data been given to me? Like, and it is, is like not fact, it's just opinion. Like, how do I move through that? Because really like a lot of times you'll get tasks that maybe are not in alignment with the actual goal that you need to achieve. And um, that is, I, I think, a, a fast track to success in, in many ways. And so being really cognizant of that, I think, is helpful. Um, and then from a from a technical perspective, um, you know, cybersecurity is is a wide, wide world of, of things. And they all come together in combination. Uh, and there, it doesn't have to all, you know, not all technical skills come together. But, like, you can think about cybersecurity as a world where you probably are going to have to bucket together several different baseline core competencies together. So like systems administration and networking and, and computing fundamentals and all of those things are stuff you could be working on today um, because they're going to come back around later on as you get into more complex topics because you're going to need to rely on those baseline fundamentals. And so, yeah, without getting too far into it, I think it's, it's a best bet to get a nice baseline of technical generalist skills and that'll take you a long way into whatever you desire so i'm curious how does one get into this field because we've been talking about the skills competencies so um one thing that popped into mind was perhaps um those certifications online right the comptia plus but um should students also be focusing on websites um having a linkedin networking type presence or um perhaps um a portfolio page on whether it's github or through any of those platforms i'm curious to um gauge your opinion on that yeah, so um, I think the the path of of networking, LinkedIn, having a portfolio, having a GitHub profile, like a uh, portfolio, I should say, all of those things are are great things to have. I don't think they're necessary, but one of the things that's um, I think great about this field is is we're just desperate for talent. Like every other day, there's another report saying there's a million unfilled jobs and or multi million unfilled jobs in cybersecurity, and so. You know, you can pick up these skills off the bookshelf, online, just doing testing at home. Like these are things that you can just do if you wanted to. And getting those skills really at any time, high school through college um, or after college, like I did, um, you know, like all of the above, like they're all a, a, an ability to set you ahead of the crowd and put you in a position where like not only do you have like the book knowledge or the certification knowledge, but like, you have practical hands on skills uh, across you know, a multitude of different, um, you know, 
I guess, projects or, or lab work that you could bring to the table. Uh, so I think that kind of aligns more with portfolios and GitHub, um, you know, LinkedIn networking. I got my first job through a recruiter via LinkedIn. So like, yeah, like definitely starting to kind of build your network. I definitely think will help. Um, and at the end of the day, I think um, the way to get into the game is, is through tech in general, you know, cybersecurity, you could think about like a specialization in many ways. You're combining those baseline skill sets that I was referring to and using them in a specialized way. And so really you can come out of, you know, many, many different worlds um, that sometimes don't even have to be technical. That's a little bit off to the side, but like in many ways, I think if I was to give advice other than the like portfolio developments and stuff like that, it's all nice to have, but really you can break into this game by just having general practitioner knowledge, baseline skill sets in, in tech, um, and you know a lot of stuff that you would learn through the ITI major. It's it's it is setting you up to understand how global technology works, and then you can choose to dive into you know lower level topics and leverage that into uh, cybersecurity roles whenever you're ready. And students don't have to necessarily be looking just at tech firms, right? They can be looking into healthcare companies, media companies, um, the big tech companies, Google. Um, to, that focus more into social media, like Twitter, um, like Instagram, like Meta, right? So there is an um, one track in terms, because all these corporations and all these organizations are looking for, um, especially with, uh, as you mentioned, a million tech jobs need to be filled almost every day. Yeah, so um, there really is no bias towards industry. Um, even I'll put it this way, like even smaller industries or smaller, you know, quote unquote, mom and pop shops, they still need cybersecurity. They still need that level of protection. And so you don't have to directly work for them. You work for a service provider that delivers that service to them for whatever fee, you know, those companies are in a service provider field and they need security talent. If you were to go after, after you know, bigger industries that have their own internal cybersecurity programs, um, then great. And those exist, you know, in basically every industry. And so, like, it doesn't necessarily have to be like, oh, I'm looking at like the the Googles and the Metas of the world. Um, you really can go after the roles that you're looking for and the, the jobs are there. Um, so I think really it's more important to figure out like what type of, of cybersecurity um, practice you're interested in. Uh, and then just go start looking at the jobs because they are out there and they're across the board in terms of the disciplines and the fields that they're in. Is there a favorite part of the job or something that motivates or drives you every day? Uh, yeah. So I think probably two things come to mind. Um, the first is uh, I really like the the puzzle solving that comes along with cybersecurity. It's one of the reasons I've stayed in the cyber defense side of the game. It's uh, it's a way to constantly be asking questions of the data and like watching like as you come up with a good hypothesis and like you start to pursue it and you start finding more and more threads to pull that are in alignment with that like that is a super rewarding feeling so if you have that investigative mindset like great like this is a great field for that um and so yeah i got really motivated by like the puzzle solving the investigator side of things um and then the other half of it is it's a it is a way to really deeply make an impact, um, not just to the company, but like to the people who are supported by the company and to the industry at large. This is actually one of the coolest things about cybersecurity is the private sector and the public sector work really close to closely together. We deal with the same types of problems and we share information across the board. Like it's a, uh, a way that you operate really close to, um, you know, the battlefield that is going on, you know, <laughs> across the entire world. Um, but then beyond that, like you're, you are making impact to, you know, those mom and pop shops, depending on what industry you're in to people who like need their business to continue, including, you know, even now, like I work for one specific company and we have patients and patient data we have to worry about. Like I am there to protect that data uh, and to protect this company. And so those two things, like, you know, that's very motivating to me. So I think that's pretty great. Um, so those are the two major ones. Um, yeah, I'd leave it at that. And you mentioned impact, right? Because there's so much reports, you know, of hacking, um, spyware, and, you know, the attack of viruses. And so that attributes, um, well, that's one aspect of attributing to protecting 
those patients' records and data, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So to end, are there any lasting words or advice for students that you would um perhaps um want to provide or perhaps um wisdom or advice that you wanna that you would have liked to have known when you were a student yourself? Uh, I guess advice to leave for now, I definitely would say like there's there's great resources available online that like didn't exist before. And so like whether gauging your interest on whether or not you wanted to dive into this world, um, there's a lot of really cool stuff out there. Like start with YouTube, look up like Black Hat or, or DEF CON conferences and just watch some of the presentations. Like there's a lot of really cool stuff that gets put on there. That's just a good way to see if you're interested. Um, but beyond that, like, yeah, go to Barnes and Noble and just pick up some books and, you know, you read them in the aisle and see like does this type of stuff interest me a lot of that stuff um i think is is going to be a really good way to get exposure and again you could play with all these technologies you just download them and they're there for you um you you can do these things really easily so know to look around um at the resources that are available to you for free so i think that's great um and then uh, i guess the other thing i would note is from a career perspective you know like treat your career like a chess game like don't just flail in there and you know, think you're going to, you know, walk through life to success by not planning. Uh, like, I think it's important to to look at look at your career like you're playing a game of chess. Think a move or two ahead. Um, it's uh, it has reaped great benefit to me in the past. And uh, certainly, you know, like I don't have to tell myself I thought about this the whole time, um, but I have found great success through it. And um, there's more to that conversation, but certainly like, you know, Think twice, plan ahead, uh, and you'll and bet on yourself. And I think you'll you'll end up in good shape. Well, yeah, no, that's rewarding advice, right? Thinking long term, you know, where you want to go, where do you hope to see yourself, and just building out that long term vision. As you said, um, it, it is playing chess, and you know, figuring out the moves, and really having um a detailed plan of where you want to go. Um, but no, Keith, it's been an honor, you know just being able to be in conversation with you and really um, gain your insights and knowledge, you know, on the industry, but as well as being able to conversate about your own career journey into this industry. And thank you again for taking the time to speak with us. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for the time and uh, yeah, go are you. That again was my interview with Keith Dempsey. We look forward to connecting with Keith very soon. Thank you all for joining us for another edition of Sky Career Talks, and be sure to share, like, comment, and subscribe. Also follow our LinkedIn group page, Sky Career Corners, to connect with our brilliant students and alumni. Until next time, I'm David James. Take care.